Saturday Welcome morning cartoons. Show. I decided to actually take a bite of my cereal right away there. Um, <laughs> oh, man, you're a pro. You're a pro. You're okay. a pro star. Good. <laughs> <laughs> and happy early Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day is tomorrow. This is the Valentine's Day episode. And uh, Caitlin McGurk from the Billy Ireland Cartoon Library Museum is back. Hi, Caitlin. Woo! Hi. It's good to be here. And I have a special Valentine's Day cereal. Well, show Chocolate. us. Chocolate and strawberry Cheerios. Whoa. Whoa, yeah, look yeah. at that. It's limited edition. So, you know, for the That's collection. That's the sexiest outfit. cereal of all. Wow. It is. It's pretty seductive. Very charming. You're, you're doing pretty well for yourself then, huh? If you got limited edition cereal, like, you're doing okay over there. I don't want to brag, but yeah, there's some. No, limited. brag. By all means, brag. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, what else is everybody having for a Valentine's Day breakfast? Well, I knew that we were, that we had a, for the for the cartoon that we're watching today that we had an ensemble cast so i went with an ensemble cereal i put all three of these <laughs> fuckers together with, Good man yeah i know with my uh cereal marshmallows that whitney got me and uh they're all together in one and uh i'm flying pretty high right now i'm feeling pretty good uh, how is it i yeah how is it how is that concept? uh I, i'll be honest the crispix is ruining it and that's the healthiest one that. of them all. Yeah. yeah. And it's it's kind of dominating. The Crispix is really like taking charge, hmm. like over the Captain Crunch and over the seems yeah. so innocuous. Um <sighs> Crispix. Um I uh I, I commented before on how I realized that rice krispies are actually sweetened. I always thought those were like just puffed rice, like the healthy cereal, but no, there's there's a lot of sugar in them. But so they came like right off the tree. Yeah, yeah. That's what I thought. I was wrong. But it turns out that they decided to make them sugarier. And do frosted like frosted flakes frosted crispies and uh i've been eating these and they're they're pretty good but they're really sugary they're like like your teeth hurt kind of can sugary. i see what uh what snap crackle and pop look like these days i haven't seen yeah they're pretty smooth uh, there's pop like star characters yep that's what they look like and what are they are they elves um i don't know caitlin <laughs> You know, I know this is my area of expertise. <laughs> but Cereal I, mascots. They're, they're, yeah, they're little people. I don't know. Oh, well. But they do seem related oh, well. to the Keebler elves. They kind of have like the elf ears, don't they? That's what they do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the guy in the bottom right? What was he? He always seemed like like a band leader or like the Yeah, the Sergeant of, like, Pepper. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Pop. Yeah, he's Pop. Hmm. Well, what, well, do you, what do you do? I know he's pop guy. I don't know. He's he's yeah. He's a band leader. Let's say that, George. Uh, well, I wanted to try pop. something new, so I got um, these. This is Kellogg's Chatty Flakes, um, <laughs> with <laughs> Snap Crackle and Nick. Mm -hmm. And the weirdest thing, I don't know the coincidence. If you see here, if uh, free inside, oh, you get a, a Billy uh, Island sticker. Oh, really? that's cool. I mean, I, I, those are just they're so in demand. You know that. I would. I can't wait to get that and put it on my skateboard. Yeah, I was gonna put on my, I'm going to put on my three-speed bike. <laughs> well, I, I guess the thing is that, that uh, Caitlin's been on many times and has mentioned the Billy, Billy Ireland Museum, but I didn't know anything about Billy Ireland. So I... Um, I and did, what did you learn? Did you just uh, look I, at the face? <laughs> a, a late 19th century cartoonist. This was all on the back of the sticker. Um, <laughs> and uh, I, I, I guess trailblazing. I, I don't really know, but you yeah, would know. I would think. I do know. He was the so he was the lead cartoonist for the Columbus Dispatch, which from like late 1800s till 1935, and that's our main newspaper in Central Ohio. Very, very influential. There's a ton of major cartoonists. You could say most major uh, forms of comic art have come out of Ohio, and he mentored a lot of the people that went on to be greats. In the wow. 
Who, who are some other big ones that came out of, of Ohio that, that we well, would know, like main, yeah. like more mainstream stuff? How about uh, two young guys who invented Superman? What? Siegel and Schuster? Yes. <laughs> They're from Cleveland, Ohio. Um, uh, Harvey P. Carr. Um, oh, yeah. I could get more Carr's. like old school. Uh, uh, Richard Outcolt is considered like the father of the comic strip. Like, Yellow kid. Yeah. So he, he invented what's considered the first comic strip. It's debatable, but anyway, he also invented Buster Brown that then became a shoe company, but he, um, he's from Ohio. Jeff Smith, who's huge, is, is from Ohio. Uh, Edwina Dumb, who I've done a lot of research on, is the very first female political cartoonist. She's from Ohio. Um, wow. The list goes on. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Well, it makes sense. Yeah, you should go. When What's the status with Bill, Billy Ireland? Will it be open eventually this year for people to browse? So, yeah, we actually just reopened this past weekend uh, with a pogo exhibit, and we're continuing to show an exhibit that I co-curated called Ladies First, A Century of Women's Innovations in Comics and Cartoon Art, and those will be up into the summer, and then in the summer, and we haven't announced this yet, but I can say, say it here now, is uh, we're doing a show that's all <laughs> very scholarly. It's all about cartoon dogs. Just oh, beloved cartoon whoa. dogs. Ah, <laughs> I gotta yeah. go to Columbus. Count me in. Yeah, so and Marmaduke, Howard Hughes. Yeah, it's, it's being curated actually by Brian Walker, who's the son of Mort Walker. The, yes, uh, Beetle Bailey. Beetle Bailey. So, uh, I thought that, you were going to say I, it was all about pop. The, uh, <laughs> the <laughs> if we can work him in there somehow. Was clearly a band leader. <laughs> clearly. Yeah. Cool. I'm glad you guys are back open and up and running. And uh, well, yeah, that's excellent. I'm excited to get back there. I, I can't wait. I love that. I love that that place so much. So yeah, yeah I'm excited. Nice to see you guys again. Well, Meet let's you. talk about today's cartoon, which is um, specially curated for Valentine's Day. Um, it is a, a Valentine's Day episode of the Partridge Family spinoff, Partridge Family 2200 AD, which takes place in the future. So, uh, what does everybody know about the Partridge Family? Did, well, wait did a second. It, it takes place 180 years from now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, but here, first, let's talk about the Partridge family because you got to have some backstory sure. if you're a, a younger viewer. Um, Partridge family was uh, a fake band like the Monkees created for television. Um, and uh, it was based on the Cow Sills, another family band. And the idea was that this uh, single, this widow uh, had five kids and they were all in a band together. They travel in a, a cool bus. And uh, Reuben Kincaid was their, their manager. And uh, Shirley Jones on the left, she was in Music Man. She she actually sang in the band, and so did um, uh, Sean Cassidy, who's to David the right. Cassidy. David, David Cassidy, right? <laughs> and da so they were the only ones who actually sang and played instruments. The other people did nothing. They just kind of mimed it in in the show. And uh, this is David Cassidy saying, "Be my Valentine." That's from a poster from a teen magazine at the time. He he became the real breakout star and a heartthrob and had a pretty good voice. And so yeah, the show ran from uh, I think 1970 to 74. And uh, that's a Nick Pruer shirt if I've ever seen one right there. I was looking at all the the like fashions from the Partridge Family. And I'm like, I want every one of David Cassidy's shirts. They're incredible. Um, and uh, so I I guess I. I think I saw a few reruns. They, I think I love you was the big breakout hit song from that, but the the theme song is pretty good. I'll make you happy. Did we yeah, we watched it. It was yeah. like it was one of those like uh, was it on Nick at Night or something or yeah. like it was one of those things where uh, my brothers and I would watch it after school. It was on the timing was just right for after school, and I remember just watching it. But we would watch it ironically and we would laugh at the hairstyles and Danny bought a Ducci, like we, the big red hair and the, yeah. I remember just like laughing at it and it being a joke. George and Caitlin, do you guys watch? Yes. And uh, I found it. I always found shows from that era, including the Brady bunch kind of weird to watch. It just like, it was so out of date, even 10 years later. Oh yeah. It was hard. It was like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was like I alien. I think I probably like Joe saw it just on reruns or Nick at Night or whatever. And yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. It's okay. I never like, I can't reconcile the fact of how, like how much I hate Danny Bonaducci with how much I love saying his voice. I mean, saying his name, sorry. Saying his, his name. name. It's just like, yeah. 
Yeah. Dances on your tongue. It's a it beautiful does. Bonaducci. Danny Bonaducci. Bonaducci. Danny Bonaducci. <laughs> That's like, poetry. That's a haiku, I think. Right? And as like as a native Long Islander, I just feel like names like that yeah. just want to say them over and over, like yeah. education, you know? So you mess with me, you gotta go see Dana Bonaducci, okay? <laughs> you know, one of us. <laughs> I um, did realize I have the uh when you told me what episode we were uh watching, I realized I have the Partridge family record. Oh, oh nice does, does that make it to the turntable that often i listen to it uh in preparation for this show that's there all we go. the research <laughs> that i did well the, yeah. the thing about it too like the monkeys they actually had some real talent behind the yeah. the scenes so like you know david cassidy was the singer but then um the backing vocalist for several members of the the wrecking crew the famous studio musicians and so they had some good songwriters and stuff like that so some of the songs are pretty big hits and uh in I guess Hanna-Barbera, this is like 1974, towards the end of the Partridge family's live action run. And Hanna-Barbera wanted to make an updated version of the Jetsons where they wanted to make them teenagers because that was, you know, selling cartoons with teens in it. So they're like, let's make Elroy a teenager and Judy would be like now in the workplace. And uh, CBS didn't, they didn't like that idea, but they did like just doing that with the Partridge family. So there's no explanation for why the Partridge family is 100 years in the future. There's no explanation for why they're a musical act, but now they're galaxy-wide famous. But it's just all the regular gang. Okay, but logistically, are they the offspring of them? Are they like the juniors of no, them? No, they the they Partridge just, family. So they're time travelers. I guess, but they never explain that. They're just, they're in the future. That's all we know. So there's the gang. Instead of in being in a you know a Mondrian inspired bus, they're in a spaceship, and it's exactly the Jetsons. <laughs> it's exactly the. Jetsons. I was just gonna say, don't don't the Jetsons have the same dog? Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, and ladies and gentlemen, guess who the dog is voiced by? A, a young Miss Frank Welker. You maybe, guessed it. Maybe a futuristic Frank Welker. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you know how the Jetsons had Orbity, that little you know white space creature the the dog's name is orbit i mean it's just so exactly the what, you know. what i'm learning in watching all of these saturday morning cartoons is that they never really tried that hard they never did no, <laughs> no they're just like let's get it done as quickly as possible they yeah. said no to very little yeah i think the ones that got the most notes were like new kids on the block and and the right. pro stars and the in the big celebrity ones but like stuff like this they're like oh let's just shit it out yeah, and so and like with the Brady Bunch a cartoon that we watched, um, I think like a few of them did the voices at first, like Danny Bonaducci did, um, Brian Forster. Um, I think that at the beginning Shirley Jones did, and David Cassidy. Then they're just like no, and the, so they had <laughs> replacements. Mickey Dolan's made several guest appearances from the Monkees on the show as a voiceover artist. Did, um, did Bonaducci? Did he say no? Because I feel like he says yes he's to in everything. It. He's in it. <laughs> the yeah. whole the whole run of every. Okay, yeah. good. Okay, yeah. good. All right. Because he, the, the, he was in the boxing. Right. Thing. You know, I feel I feel like he's not going to say no to anything. So the episode we're going to watch is Lori, who's um, was uh, Susan Day, who was kind of like a heartthrob too. She was, you know, like the female David Cassidy. There are pinup posters of her. She gets a computer date in this episode. And uh, hijinks ensue. That's all you need to know. Here's a uh, Partridge family, 2200 AD. Totally stoked. I'm so excited to see what the future actually looks like. There it is. <laughs> Cities rising in the sky. Free train Japanese found. Same sound effect. Here for yep. us to see. It's 2200 AD. Jackson tubes, food pellets. It's the Partridge family. Show I like huge sandwiches. How it's gonna be the Partridge family. Loving it all and having a ball in 2200 AD. Nick, did you say one season? One season, 16 episodes, yeah. Uh, this one aired on September 7th, 1974. Looks like Con Trail's here to see Lori again. 
boy, is he a creep. Well, Lori seems to like him. Oh, what does she know? She's a girl. Hey, I got an idea. I got the audience. Laugh track. I'm yep. all ears. Sure we want to help Lori. Just tell us what to do. <laughs> Look at Bonnie Ducci's outfit. I mean, he's even goofy looking as a head of our <laughs> parent cartoon. Yeah, he can't win. Do. Just tell me, and I'll tell Chris. I got my own ears. I can hear. Okay, okay. You two can argue later. Now, here's what we want you to do. And then we... Hiya, Con. Hi, old buddy. Bow wow. Hi, fellas. I'm glad we got this chance to get better acquainted now that you and Lori... That's well done. Well, you know. Yep. Uh, no what? Oh, well, oh, come on, yeah. Con. How long are you going to keep it a secret? Huh? Uh... Bow wow, rub, rub, bow wow. Orbit says he'll babysit whenever you need him. What am I going to need a babysitter for? Dum, 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 dum. Dum, 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 dum. Come on, Tracy, you're walking too slow. I am not. The flower girl sets a pace. No, she doesn't. The ring boy does. What are they doing? <laughs> oh, just practicing. Practicing? Wait a minute. You don't think Lori and I are... No, we're not. I mean, we're just good... Well, you know, I, I never... Now that you're practically a member of the family... No, no, oh, no, no I just remembered. So I, I gotta go. Tell Lori I'm not feeling good. I'll call her sometime. That was a stroke of genius, Danny. I don't it's never think we'll be seeing they... much of old Tom from now what? on. It's never explained why they don't like that guy. Her date. Calm. They, for oh, some reason... Guy? Guy? He's the same voice as Fred from Scooby-Doo. Yeah, That's why they hate him. Yeah, it's exact voice, yeah. <laughs> I'm ready, Con. Con, where is he? Uh, <laughs> he had to leave. Yeah, he said to say goodbye. Wait a minute. I know you two. What'd you say to him? Nothing. We're just talking, making him feel at home. I guess Nick, he just Nick, didn't want to get... Nick, would you say... Would you say <laughs> that his body shape is the same as your body shape right there? No, I would not say that. No? No. Stand up. <laughs> okay. yeah, well, you you be the judge. Tell me. Are you wearing let's, three three quarter sleeves? Yeah, I have a giant white belt, and uh, yeah, let's Mary, see your side by Mary. side. Married, so that's it. Mom, listen, Lori. Those two self-appointed like chaperones have just chased away my date for the harvest hop next week. Oh, come on, Lori. The harvest You'll hop. get another date. Well, you bet I will. You, both of you, you're taking me. No way, sis. I'm taking and we'll Judy. Kiss at the end I've been the trying night. to get a date with her for weeks. And I got a date with Sandy. Tough. You broke my date. You can break yours. Lori's right. Unless she gets another date for the harvest hop, you've both got the to take her. Oh, <laughs> boy. <laughs> Interplanetary computer dating service. Is this where you're going to get Lori a date? Pretty clever, huh? I don't know. She's I mean, pretty a computer picky. dating service Keith, in 1974. Remember Judy? Yeah, this is right. free Tinder. Let's go. Mr. Space Out? Yes. That's how big we want to get a date for our sister. Welker. Oh, good. Yes. Good. I'm waiting. For what? For a Frank description. Like. Anything your sister's little heart desires, I have it. Let's start with this one. We haven't said anything yet. What'd you punch? Handsome. Everybody wants handsome, right? No. How about height? Six feet. Mm, let's be generous. Make him six two, Mr. Space Out. <laughs> Maury likes the strong type. Right. Muscles of steel. Well, send her a steel. picture of him in the chair. <laughs> One in front of my picture. Uh, bow wow. Rap-ta, 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 says he's got to be a good dancer. Yeah, give us a guy with swivel hips, Mr. Space Out. Make him sort of a knight in shining armor. Now you are about to see the marvel of the 23rd century. Ta-da! Yeah. <laughs> a pure symphony of scientific harmony. Now to send the dick pics. <laughs> it 
really didn't have much of a time. Sounds like a boiler factory to me. Oh, well, that's only because I forgot to activate the pressure-sensitive transistor diode. I don't think this scene's gone on long enough. That, that'd be my only complaint. It's the year 2200. There's so many things you can do with the year 2200. This is yeah, him. And they're blowing it. Mr. Right. I sure Remember those cards? Those huh? computer cards? Yeah. Cutting, cutting edge punch cards. Yeah, yeah. the punch cards. Hope so, Mr. Space uh -huh. Out, for my sake. And mine. Tell Mr. Wright to be at our apartment around I seven feel like Danny's tonight. Danny's too young to be going they on. They knew eight. we had a practice session this afternoon. They're probably out ruining somebody else's life. Wait, wait, is that the mom? I... Yeah, that's Susan Day there. That's um the mom of the uh, Partridge family. Shirley Partridge, Shirley yeah. Shirley. Yeah. Or yeah, Shirley yeah. Jones. What did I say? Shirley Jones. Susan Day. Yeah. Yeah, that's Lori is Susan Day. Yeah, Shirley Jones is the mom. Oh. Uh, Shirley Partridge. This is life. Hi. Are you waiting for us? I hope the reason you're late is because you were breaking your dates with Judy and Sandy so you can take me to the harvest hop. Better than that, oh, sis. Is, we got you, you your want? own date. What? Is that what you want to do? Like, if, if you can't go on a date with somebody that you're interested in romantically, that you would then take your brothers yeah. as a two replacement? Yeah. Yeah. Didn't you and your you had two brothers? You know how it works. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how it used to work though? Because maybe that's how it used to work. Because why would it they never... just make this up? Maybe in the future that's how it works. I oh, that's how if it's it's usually the reverse. If it's like an older brother, it's like, yeah, take your little sister to do this thing. You right. Know? But this seems a little yeah. Freaky. Take both of your brothers to the harvest hop because <laughs> your date walked out on you. What what are they harvesting too? Like, because it's probably like an Oktoberfest kind of a thing, right? What's with his pants? It's just out of curiosity. The, the line spring. in them? Yeah. His camel toe. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I think that's more moose knuckle there. I, think, I believe that's a moose knuckle. You'll be in here the future, they have different terminology. <laughs> yeah. Oh, haven't you two done enough for me already? Wait till you see him, Lori. He's six feet, two inches tall. Yeah. Uh, oh, wow. I can't keep my eyes off of it. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a front butt. It's like a front Strong. butt. Yeah. <laughs> There's an alien, too. A great dancer. <laughs> I can't stand it. Why are you getting so emotional, Marion? It's my date <laughs> they're like, describing. It's like Poochie. The I, way the, it, the, the, the animation cell yeah, just kind of going they, up. Yeah, like, they, they just kind of physically dragged the animation yeah. cell out of frame. Yeah. I can't stand it. <laughs> Why are you getting so emotional, Marion? It's my date they're describing. Maybe he has a brother. Now that everyone's romantic problems are sorted out, maybe we can start our rehearsal. Great. How's she yeah. the mom? I know. It's like the Brady Bunch cartoon. Musical number. Exactly. Brady Bunch cartoon was that? Also Hanna Barbera? I can't remember. I don't know. It felt like it predated the, this era. So I, I don't know. I, I don't think it was actually. Since you moved into the neighborhood, you should have been not David looking fine. I've been trying to talk. It's kind of a kind of a cool shot right there. That is actually. It's kind of Fantasia esque almost. To you, but you're busy all of the time. I don't hear this song. So you know what you do to me when you give me your number to phone. But then when I do, I never get through because you never are at home. You. Lori's all psyched up over her blind date. I hope he's as groovy as as you told her he'd be. Don't worry. It'll be the computer date of the century. That must be him now. Hi, I'm Stanley Steele. Did anybody call it that it was going to be an actual robot? 
he should have given us the opportunity because I definitely would have called that. Yeah. Laurie Partridge live here. Kind of Iron Giant like. Steel. Knight in shining armor. Say, is this your dog? Hi, fella. Too much uh, going on. I stand. I'm Lori's brother, Keith. Oh, I have oh, a front oh, butt. Oh, glad to meet you, <laughs> Keith. Uh, I'm Danny. Uh, uh, hi, I have Danny. this first body oh. shape. <laughs> this is our friend, Vini. <laughs> He's kind of like Shaggy. Uh, pleased to yeah. meet you, Stanley. Lori will be ready in a minute, Stan. Have a seat. Okay. Oh. <laughs> What was that? What, Caitlin? Can you, can you go back there? Can we look at <laughs> his eyes again? Did anyone else notice that? that up, go to that close up a second ago. Here? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Good My call! God. That might have to be the still for today's show. Oh, that's the <laughs> thumbnail. We got our thumbnail. There it is. Lori will be ready in a minute, Stan. Ow. Have a seat. Okay. <laughs> what was that? I, uh, uh, I think your date is here. Oh, what's he like? Well, he's different. Oh, let me take a peek. Is he everything they said? Everything. And more. Oh, dear. My knight in shining armor turns out to be a nut in stainless steel. That, that studio audience, they must be exhausted from all that <laughs> laughter. And, and the guy doing Foley, the, uh... The sound effects guy, his arms must be oh. uh, shaking from exhaustion. How is that what do they it? do when they when you're exhausted? They, do you shake? I don't know. Yeah, yeah you yeah. shake from exhaustion. Okay. I, I forgot to, you know, <laughs> normally we do commercials. The reason I had Rice Krispies is because it turns out the Partridge family endorsed Rice Krispies. Let me play this and then we'll get to George's commercial break. Shirley, Patrick, wake it up, wake it up. Daddy, Chris and Tracy, wake it up, wake it up. Wake up like the Partridge family. Wake up with Kellogg's Rice Krispies. There we go. Wake it up. No Wake concern up. about selling out like in in uh, in the nineties. <laughs> no. Well, when you're a fake concern. band, you've you've kind of. <laughs> already sold you're, out you're like built-in sellout yeah right i mean like yeah but it is valentine's day so george what do you have for us for commercials today just a bunch of weird valentine's day commercials from some local some national all weird saturday morning cartoons will be right back hi kids we're the care bears and we have a special valentine message just for you Call us right now at 1-900-909-5678 and oh we'll tell you God. how you're getting ready for Valentine's Day in Kerala. We'll have new and These hot Care Bear singles you every day. Will... Remember, Valentine's <laughs> waiting on the Day line is just for you. around the corner. And there's cards to make, cakes to bake, oh, and all kinds of fun we can have numbers. together. $2 the first and 45 cents each additional meal. Tips, please check with your parents before you call. Yes. Yes. We've got what you're looking for. TV 20. Yes. KTZO, Channel 20, we got a bunch San Francisco. Of those. Here's Carvel's newest edition. This is Cupid Puss for Valentine's Day. And your participating Carvel ice cream dealer would just love to show and make a Cupid Puss Valentine's cake. There it is. Cupid Puss. And you can send it to a friend by calling the toll free number 800 327 Gift. We honor most major credit cards. Thank you. Please kill me. <laughs> Welcome, fellow Cupid. It's Valentine's Day. And we're going to help them find their heart's delight. Right? Right! And is Hallmark going to make it special? Yeah. With this sweetheart bracelet. What was the question? Cute, huh? And it's free. A gift from Hallmark Retailer with a $55 Hallmark purchase. Now go out there and win their hearts! Yeah! Find your bracelet at Hallmark, the place to go when you care enough to send the very best. It's very clean. Our love is here to stay. 
I don't understand this commercial at all. So far, it seems pretty it's depressing. For... <laughs> oh, we are supposed to guess what it's for. Hmm. Uh, that's a good um, question because I have no fucking. And I, I don't either. I haven't watched these. So. Which, which? How about this? Which twentieth century political leader do you expect to appear in this Valentine's <laughs> Day ad? <laughs> Walter Mondale. Jimmy Carter. Oh my gosh. Uh, Reagan. There you yeah. go. That's why. But ever and the day. In a world that changes day by day, show someone your love is here to stay with a Hallmark Valentine card. Our love is here to stay. Hallmark Valentines. When you care enough to send the very best. Which one was it? I didn't see it. It was, it was Nikita Khrushchev at the UN pounding his shoe. Oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, oh, there. of course. I was going to say Happy that. Valentine's Day, guys. Yeah, happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Here's Khrushchev. Cards and gifts can be found in any shop. But if it's quality chocolates you want, there's only one place to stop. Philadelphia Candies creates real milk and dark chocolates in their modern factory and serves it fresh to you with personalized service. Choose from beautifully hand-decorated solid chocolate or white hearts and novelties or from our large selection of heart boxes filled with delicious Philadelphia chocolates. So if you want to give chocolates to your <laughs> sweetie this Valentine's Day, why not give the best? Remember, at Philadelphia Candies, chocolates are our specialty. Now back to Saturday morning cartoons. Do you guys do uh, Valentine's Day with your loved ones at all? Do you guys do anything yes. with them? Do you? What do you do? Uh, oh, well. I would love to see what you do. Like what? What, <laughs> what goes on in the George household with on, on Valentine's well, Day? Everything occurs by mail since uh, <laughs> Cindy lives in Chicago. So right. Uh, uh, Kayla, what do you do with, with uh, your lover? <laughs> That's personal, but <laughs> and I know this is a kids show. Mm. I think um, you know, I mean, nice dinner. We're actually going to a cabin this time, which will be great just for a change of pace. But I've I've also done the uh, White Castle Valentine's Day dinner. Does anyone know about that? Is that where they I... accept reservations and do? Yeah, so you can like make a reservation and go to uh, White Castle. I did this when I lived in uh, Brooklyn and they have, you know, tablecloths on the table and vases on every table and it's actual like waitstaff service. Very romantic, yeah. That'd be like a funny, that's a funny Valentine's Day. Oh, it was, like, that's, it was yes. disgusting. I mean, we yeah. barely ate anything, but it was great <laughs> just to, you know, for the ambience. You go for Yes, it. totally, yeah. And then I you do both little, have I, diarrhea at night. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's it's love diarrhea okay. though. What do you do with your lover, Joe? I, I <laughs> my lover and I, what we do. I hope you're really excited about this. Um, we we uh, I, I always make a construction paper thing uh, with our cats, and I do a cat thing with like our cats being like lovingly. I, I should bring some in because I'm actually. It's the only like artistic thing that I do with like cutting out and gluing and like stuff like that that I actually do. And I'm actually proud of them every single year. And it's something that I actually do. And so that's Joe's awesome. romance corner. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm flying solo this year. I'm just calling one nine hundred Care Bears, and uh, <laughs> we'll let the Care Bears do the rest. Uh, if you know what I'm saying. So uh, Care Bears, <laughs> Care right. Bears doing the heavy lifting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my, those are my lovers. Yeah. Uh, so let's uh, watch the conclusion of, uh, and this, this conclusion's shorter, by the way, because I, I could barely tolerate this cartoon. So here's uh, the Partridge Family 2200 AD, Lori's Computer Day. I don't know how much more that floor will take. Yeah, he's got to weigh a couple of tons. Oh, Stan, why don't you sit down and take a load off your feet? Oh, uh, you think it's safe? Sure. This sofa's a little more solid than that chair. Boy, I sure am nervous about meeting your sister. Oh! Hi, everybody. Uh, physical I'm comedy Lauren, here. And you must be my date. Golly! Yeah, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm... Stan. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm Stan. <laughs> You're just as they described you, Stan. Oh, gee. Thank you, Miss Laurie. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me a minute, Stan. We can go after I have a word with my brothers. 
Follow Did me. Just Walter's voice. Dear brothers. Who, uh -oh. The robot. The robot. Is that Walter? Oh, right, you stellar sure. stoops. He was the first boyfriend. Yeah, you stellar stoops. Uh oh. All right, you stellar stoops. Whose bright idea was it to get me a date with that walking junkyard? His! Oh, never mind. You're both going to pay for Where's it. She looking? And you're both still taking <laughs> me to the Harvest Top. What? <laughs> oh, boy. I pulled that wedgie out of your front. Here you are, Stan. It's ice cold. Gee, thanks, Mrs. Partridge. <laughs> it's a future yeah. beer. And, and also, we have a muted trumpet, too. Oh, perfect. Cold. I tell Gee, a scene. thanks, Mrs. Partridge. <laughs> That's real. Oh, gosh. I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. They're not making bottles the way they used to. Ready, Stan? Have a nice time, you two. Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Mrs. Partridge. Oh, I'm real sorry. What? She's the same age as her daughter. Yeah, like, I know. Yeah. In the, Thanks, in the live action show, you can tell the difference, but go back, go back. They look like Did, colleagues. They look like. Because we see that we see them have in the a nice same time, shot you... there. Yeah, and that's a mother and a daughter. I mean, I would guess there's some Partridge Family uh, fan fiction, probably that plays that off the fact that, that you've both... written. Yeah, that I've written. Yeah. Two. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Mrs. Partridge. Oh, I'm real sorry. Oh, don't worry about it, Stan. There's one on the other side. What's her outfit right there? Did you go back? Is that? Uh... Oh, good lord! Did what she have you... pants on before? <laughs> yeah, but they're they're sort of beige colored oh, pants. Okay. Right. Back yeah. it up a little bit. Yeah, let's see. Uh... Oh, we I don't, I don't see anything yet. <laughs> there, there, <laughs> there we go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Although oh. there, you still it's still kind of hard to tell if those are pants. <laughs> it's, I don't know if this is doing the job. All right. It's a, it's a Valentine's Day episode. Yeah. So. The too hot for TV Valentine's Day episode. Hey, Lori, how about a dance? Well, I, I guess so. Oh! Is that supposed to be dancing? Well, he's dancing. Lori's just sort of hanging on. What? Why are they there? <laughs> I I guess they're just observing. I don't know. I think they're maybe supposed to meet their dates there. Oh, I thought it was like the Greek chorus. Of I, the... I, I think this. I think they just took one pass at the script and they're like, "This is it." It doesn't like, make sense. Like she's trying zero to get back notes. at them at one point, and yeah, I think it's a point seven five pass at the script. Yeah, <laughs> it rounded up. Poor Lori. Somebody's got to rescue her. Oh, wow. Rub, rub, rub. Well, okay. you're bigger than I am. Mind if I have the rest of this dance, Stan? Gee, Keith. Boys don't dance together on my planet. <laughs> but if you really want uh -huh. to... That would be foolish. Very, uh... I don't know. Forward thinking? Yeah, not forward thinking, I was going to oh, say. Oh, not forward thinking. <laughs> but I was going to say that normally boys don't dance on his home planet, but they, but he's making an exception. He's just like, oh. Oh, okay, well, maybe it is forward thinking then. Yeah, all right. You two dance so well together. Maybe you want to last. take Stan to the hop. I hope you don't mind my waiting for Lori, Mrs. Partridge. Not at all, Marion. I'm dying to find out what happened. Well, let me know if you want anything. Lori, how was your date? What was the point of that scene? I, I kept that in just because what is the whole point of this scene? We come in. The, the, I was, I'll be honest, I wasn't paying attention. I was not. It's, 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 <laughs> this whole scene, like, why have this? I hope you don't mind my waiting for Lori, Mrs. Partridge. Not at all, Marion. I'm dying to find out what happened. Well, let me know if you want anything. Okay. Lori, how and was then, your day? They just start the scene here. I was never so embarrassed in my life. You won't believe what I went through with that galvanized gargantua. Oh, that's too bad. But at least you'll never have to see him again. Wrong. Wrong? Right. Right. I'm going to make those brothers of mine sorry they ever started this whole thing. What's that got to do with them? I'm going to take a page out of their book. What does that mean? 
As far as they're concerned, they can start saving up for wedding presents. Lori, we can explain everything. Yeah, just don't yell. Why, what's the matter with everyone? Look, we're sorry about last night. We want to apologize. Well, I should apologize to you for being so mean. Are you feeling all right, Lori? I feel wonderful. And I'll never be able to thank you for introducing me to Stan. So she's huh? playing a trick on it him It took me a while to realize just how super he really is. Are we talking about the same guy? The junk man's delight? You'll learn to love him when you get to know him better. Uh, Lori, are you trying to... Say, I feel like... I, I, I thought the robot guy was really charming. I mean, I would have been happy if he showed up. Yeah? Are you talking about the robot guy? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, they're robot? so mean. I feel really bad for him. And, I mean, he was polite. You know, he had manners. He was enthusiastic. He showed up with flowers. Like... Yeah, he's just clumsy. He, That's and, it. And if he had refused to dance with him because he was another male, also like robots, do they have gender? I don't know. But well, that's, yeah. How do you consummate another... that date? I mean, there's a lot of but, questions. But the fact that he said no, that he accepted, and he's like, "I'm going to still dance with you, no matter yeah. what your gender I is." Like, like trying to get in with the family and stuff. I mean, I just feel yeah. like he geez. brought flowers. He yeah. meant well. It makes me uh, think of there's the cartoonist Linda Berry in an interview or something I read with her said like with, with Star Wars, when everyone had a crush on Luke Skywalker, she had a crush on Chewbacca. And I like totally relate to that. <laughs> and I also feel like this, this is the case here. Like I would totally go out with the Iron Giant or a knockoff or something. Yeah, over the boring blonde guy. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> exactly there's zero ego he has zero ego he's just like i'm just like a dude and i'm yeah. just like i'm trying to get through life here and yeah and I it's like the future him. it's like you know you i feel like robots and humans are will be fairly comparable so why not yeah our best All friends right. aliens so yeah exactly come on it's the it's the 2200s get with it <laughs> tell us something just that we i hope you'll be sweet to him <laughs> Oh, that must be him now. Just think how nice it'll be having a real live robot in the family. I don't believe it. You better start believing it. I'm afraid Lori's really flipped out over that zinc fink. Zinc fink. Believe me, <laughs> Keith, this idea will work. Can really? I ask you guys something? Yeah. When you picture a studio audience, like, what do you picture? Like, what, what is your imagination? When you hear the audience laugh, where are they? Like, are they in a movie theater watching this up on the big screen? Because that's what I picture. I picture a TV studio. Okay. And that they're all sitting in the mm -hmm. TV studio. Yeah. I just see a guy at a mixing desk pressing the applause button. <laughs> <laughs> George wins. That's correct. Yeah. It no, that's work, right answer. Because if it doesn't, we're both down the drain. Danny and Keith apologize for that trick they played on me. Boy, what they'll do to get out of taking me to a dance. Khan's really not such a bad guy when you get to know him. That's because you're comparing him with Stan. Speaking of Stan, did Again, my idea Stan work or didn't it? I got to admit, this idea finally worked. Now we're both off the hook, and you can take Judy to the dance, and I can take Sandy. Come on, will you, Danny? I don't want to keep Judy waiting. I'm coming, I'm coming. Did Lori and Con leave? 20 minutes ago. Have a good time at the dance, you two. But stay away from Lori and Con. Not to worry, Mom. I fixed everything, didn't I? You were very lucky. By rights, you both should have gotten what was coming to you. Oh, Mom. I'll get it. They ever see well, what happened to the I'm dad? going whether you're ready or not. The what widow. Stand? The widow. How did he die? Hi, Mrs. Partridge. What? How did he die? Oh, how did the uh, Partridge? You know, that's a good question. I don't know. Okay, this is the episode. I'll say, I'll say boating accident. I was going to say um, alcoholism. <laughs> alcoholism? Uh, George, I mean, they're in a rock band, right? I was gonna, I mean, yeah, I was going like... to say drinking while boating. So okay. Guess, <laughs> just both of you are combined into one. <laughs> Hi, fellas! Ha, 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 ha. I got a surprise for you. You were so nice about getting me a date for the Can harvest. Can I say something? I, I, I feel like 
I feel like he would be the subject of a Black Mirror episode where he's just like kind of a goofy robot, but then something turns and like mm. something dark will really happen with him. What if he's the dad <gasps> who's been, who, <laughs> whose soul has come back from the boating accident and is drunkenly in that robot? And all I his think. kids hate him. Yes. <laughs> this is Black Mirror. I got dates for you. My sisters! Now wait a minute! Come on in, girls! Oh, I'll take the little one. <laughs> okay, I'll take what's left. Hold it! Wait a minute! But we already have dates! You know something, Orbit? Ooh. I think they will get what's coming. Oh, wow! Well, hands on Walker! I have no idea what just happened. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Man, wow. Oh, we gotta get... How many writers? Wait, 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 go back, go back, go back. There's look like... How many, look how many there's writers There's like 30 of them. There's, there's like... It's like two <laughs> baseball teams. <laughs> All right, I finished one sentence. Your turn. That's, that's how this went. Uh, and then, oh, by the way, uh, Sherry Alberoni, who's who has another name, like, like Danny Bonaducci that rolls up the time. <laughs> she was an original Mouseketeer and then ended up, she's still alive. She was a, uh, the voice of Lori. And then she was also stayed in the Hanna-Barbera. She was a, the voice of um, the rich girl in Josie and the Pussycats. She was in Super Friends, George, um, as Wendy. And mm. uh, so she, do you think, is she still with us? Yes, she is. Okay. Do you think that when she dies, do you think that <laughs> there will be like the AP will get, a press release and like or you you know like they'll say like oh today sherry Al- Alber- alberoni died do you think that we'll know about it or do you think she'll just die quietly <laughs> great great question uh i think it's up to us for how she dies i don't it's yeah. not this we don't know how, whether she'll die qu- quietly well but, uh, but, no but there was somebody who just died recently uh gladys kravitz just died recently like uh, a couple weeks that's ago. That's a big deal. That's glad as is that a, But is that a big deal? Like, I, I barely remembered who she was. And I was just like, whoa, she's making news right now. And I she was in, like, in she was like 97 people years old. Will, will know when uh, Sherry Alberoni dies. The animation world will know. But she's not going to be at the uh, end of the year Emmys montage. I'll, I'll put it that way. Okay. All right. Did, Any did other you, speculation you about anybody's death here? <laughs> I like the art here. <laughs> Did you see that guy's Dick name? Dick Beckenbach. <laughs> That's a great wow. name. Wow. There's so many names on this. I know. These credits are intense. Theremin? Tiger West. Wow. There we go. That's I think the we Partridge can, family. We can safely say it's going to be a bitch of a Valentine's Day. <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> I got a game for us to play. All right. I'm excited about this one. Uh, it's an exciting guessing game called Partridge or Cartridge. And here's okay. here's how it works. I'm going to give you the name of either a Partridge Family episode title or a classic 8 or 16-bit video game. You have to tell me what it is. Okay. Okay. Pretty simple. Let's start with the first one. Makes sense. I've played games like this before. A Tale of Two Hamsters. Joe, what do you think? Is this Partridge or a Cartridge? Uh, Oh, this is Partridge all the way. Okay. What do you think, Caitlin? I'm definitely saying Partridge. And George? Partridge. That's right. A Tale of Two Hamsters, season two. The kids decide to raise hamsters. They get two and they multiply and they have to bring them on the road. All right, everybody's so on far, the Nick, this seems like a very easy game. I'm worried about... <laughs> well, worried remember, about there was go. a lot of weird Japanese Nintendo games and Sega, <laughs> Sega games. So, okay. all right, here we got... Uh, let me just maximize this one. Oh, look, oh he's going to maximize it for us. <laughs> Fuck. Yep. All right, we got... <laughs> hang on, let me... Okay. We got the Strikeout King. Strikeout King. I'm going partridge or cartridge. I'm going cartridge on this one. I feel like this is a baseball game. I'm going cartridge as well. George. I'm going partridge. 
George is right. Let me maximize this. We got <laughs> the Strikeout King is a season four episode where Danny is a pest to the family and is encouraged to join a baseball team. Okay. Was, did right. he become the start the Strikeout King? I assume you watched the entire episode. Yep, I watched them all. Uh, <laughs> did they adapt that to an Intellivision cartridge at any point, uh, that episode? Unfortunately not. <laughs> okay. Damn it. Snake, rattle and roll. Snake, rattle can, and roll. Can I just say that all of these titles so far also sound like um, America's Funniest Home Video titles? Who will win the $100,000? What will it be? The Strikeout King. <laughs> no Snake, rattle and roll. <laughs> <laughs> that should be the next game, actually. All right. Is it Partridge, yeah. Cartridge, or AFV? Okay. Joe, uh, what do you think? Snake, rattle and roll. I'm going to say that's partridge okay caitlin i'm going with cartridge and george cartridge because there's no um oxford comma okay <laughs> it's a cartridge snake rattle and roll oh you night- spelled it you spelled it differently if you would have spelled it that way i would have guessed the other yeah <laughs> back it up what are back you talking it about Go. it's an n it's a big n snake comma rattle Look how snake rattle is. He's a snake rattle. It's one oh, more. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Snake we, rattle we, and roll. I, I was misled. I was 1990 misled. Nintendo game. Two snakes making their way through 3D isometric levels. All right. Mr. Gimmick. Partridge or cartridge? Partridge. Cartridge. Partridge. It is a cartridge and a green cartridge at that. This is a. Uh, a weird game uh, from 1992 where you play a green blob named Mr. Gimmick, and you have a you can shoot stars. That's the mm. plot. This is mostly available in Scandinavia, but it was a cartridge. <laughs> I think you made this one up. Double trouble. Double mostly, trouble. Mostly, whenever he says like it was mostly in Scandinavia, that means that he made it up. Mm, well, I did not Photoshop that. That's an actual cartridge. All right, double. Was trouble. it actually that green color? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Double trouble. Joe? Mm, that's cartridge. Okay. Caitlin? I'm going to say partridge. George? I also will say partridge. Circle gets a square. It was both. <laughs> it was both a partridge family episode where and the description for the partridge family episode is Keith pulls a classic boner by having two dates on the same night. That's and a it's also boner. a 1996 Genesis game oh. where Buddy works his way through cartoons. Circle gets the square. <laughs> and yes. that's how you play Partridge or Cartridge. Oh. Wow. Oh, well, game. I put way too much work into that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Well, happy Valentine's Day, everybody. I, I just wonder if there's a lesson we might be able to glean from, from the Partridge family episode today. There's a lesson for us here. Ah, uh, the future, where everything will be better. All of our hopes fulfilled, all of our worries vanquished, all of our sick lusts sated. But if the future is so great, why haven't time travelers come back to make fun of us for how lousy we have it? This is the paradox. The future is unknown. So once we start inventing paranoid, unfalsifiable hypotheses about it, we might as well conclude that people from the future in invisibility suits are here with us right now, watching over us all the time. Though if they are here, I apologize for what they saw between 9 and 9.45 last night. So don't worry about the future. We're getting there one moment at a time. And that's why I always say, the more you battle is twice the knowing. It's a thinker. It's a thinker today. Very good. I definitely didn't write it in five minutes before. Yeah. Zoomed off the top of your head extemporaneous. I mean, I'm still thinking about it right now. I'm still thinking about it. Me too. Yeah. Well, wherever you are, I hope you're spending it uh, with your your lover tomorrow. And uh, that's it. That's all I got. (laughs) Nice work, everybody. (laughs) (laughs) And and uh, and I hope you wear some uh, some front butt revealing outfits tomorrow, everybody. For for a short period of the time. For a short period of time. I'm gonna put on my finest front butt. Happy Valentine's Day and happy Saturday, everybody. Happy (laughs) Saturday. I'm afraid Lori's really flipped out over that zinc fink.